Welcome to the first lecture of this series, Web Technology. Now, Web Technology is concerned with the concept, the tools, and the technologies that is used for building web applications and websites. It provides comprehensive understanding of the technologies driving the World Wide Web. Now let's look at the course outline for this course. Here is the course outline for this course. Number one, overview of the World Wide Web. And that's what this particular lecture of this series will be focused on. Subsequent lecture will talk about HTML fundamentals. We'll talk about cascading style sheets, CSS. We'll talk about advanced CSS and JavaScript fundamentals. Overview of the World Wide Web. The World Wide Web can also be called WWW or the web. And it's just a system of interconnected documents and resources linked together through hyperlinks and URLs. And also it can be accessed through the browsers. Browsers such as Brave, Chrome, or Mozilla. Now the internet is a vast global network of interconnected computer networks that spans the entire planet. It is a network of networks enabling computers and other devices to communicate with each other using a variety of protocols. Now, the World Wide Web is always used interchangeably with the Internet. But of course, there are two different things. The Internet is the network infrastructure that connects computers and devices globally, while the World Wide Web is a specific service or application that operates on top of the Internet, providing access to web pages and online content through web browsers. Now, the World Wide Web is just a specific service or application that operates on top of the internet. Why the internet, you know, connect devices all over the world together to, for the seamless exchange to aid seamless exchange of data. So there are two different and related things. Now, the World Wide Web is just a service that is provided by the internet and there are several service, services provided by the internet example your email to instant messaging like your whatsapp telegram facebook messenger you have iot these are services that operate on the internet iot that's internet of things we have file transfer protocols we have voice over ip and the rest there are so many but the www is one of those services that is built or that operate on top of the internet now tim Berners lee is the founder of the world wide web is the father of the world wide web he's the one that brought about the world wide web in the late 80s i think 1989 that's when he brought about the World Wide Web. Now let's talk about the evolution of the web. Evolution of the web. We have Web 1.0 that transition. We transitioned from Web 1.0 to Web 2.0 to Web 3.0. Now Web 1.0 is the static web. It was called the static web. Of course, that's the first type of web that came up when. British scientist Tim Berners Lee introduced the World Wide Web. And here are the characteristics of the Web, web 1.0. 1. Early era, characterized by static webs, web pages, and limited interactivity. Primarily informational and one way communicational. Basic HTML and early web browsers. Introduction of the first website and engines. And search engine now the web 1.0 was just a read only static web page it's a static web page where you can only read you can't interact with the web page 
you can't interact with the web page. It's a one-way communication. You can only read, you can write, you can't interact with it. It's static. But now web 2.0, which is called the social interactive web, was came about in the early 20s. That's 2000. And has to do with trans its its transition to dynamic interactive content. It has it the emergence of user generated content, social networking and collaboration, rich internet applications, RIAs and multimedia, rise of social media platforms, web based collaboration and cloud services. In web 2.0, we move from a static web page or a one-way communication to a dynamic, interactive, two-way communication web. Now, there's an emergence of user-generated content. What I mean by user-generated content means the user cannot generate their own content. Like on Twitter, everyone can write tweets. Anybody can write tweets. It just, it's not just a one way. And if I write a tweet, you can comment too. Everybody can interact. There's so much interactivity in the web. That's Web 2.0. The likes of Facebook, blogs, um, Google, you know, those applications, those web websites that mix two-way communication very seamless. Now we have Web 3.0, which is still ongoing. It's called a semantic or intelligent web. It focuses on semantic web, machine understanding, and AI integration of decentralized technologies like blockchain, enhanced personalization, contest aware services, and IoT. We have introduction of AI-driven virtual assistant chatbots and personalized content recommendation. This is a new world on its own. It has to do with AI, machine understanding, decentralized technologies like blockchain, and we have what we call digital money, which is what we call cryptocurrency, money that you can see, money that you can touch, cryptocurrency. Those are part of the Web 3.0 era, and that's the era that we are right now. Now look at the, the diagram of the evolution of the Web. Web 1.0 has to do with e-commerce, desktop, dedicated infrastructure. Web 2.0, social networks. Mobile first, always on. When I when we say mobile first, meaning you can access the web from your phone, and the website are always responsive. You know, uh, we have cloud-driven computing. Then web 3.0, AI-driven services, decentralized data architecture, edge computing infrastructure. As you can see, from 1990 to now, to date, that's how the how far the how far the web has gone. Now let's talk about what we call the uniform resource locators. Now from the word uniform resource locator, it means to locate, it means something to locate a resource. It's for locating a resource. From the name, it is used for locating a resource. Now let's look at definition. A uniform resource locator is a standardized address used to access resources on the World Wide Web or other internet-based system. The URL is just used to access or to locate resources on the web. On the web. And it is composed of various components. Number one, protocol. Two, domain name. Three, part. Four, query. Five, fragment identifier. All these together, all these all together specify the location and the nature of resource you want to access on the internet. For example, now https column slash ww dot example dot com column eighty eighty slash path slash two slash resource dot html question mark query equals to value pound sign then section one. Now, in this URL, we can break down the URL into its components. The first component is a scheme, or we can call it a protocol. 
and the scheme here is HTTPS. There's two major protocols on the internet. HTTP or HTTPS. Now, HTTP means Hypertext Transfer Protocol. Now, Hypertext Transfer Protocol is just a fundamental protocol that has to do with the exchange of data in the World Wide Web. Through the World Wide Web. It gives a rule or convention for exchanging data or for the transfer of data from the client to the server. Now, the S there, the other variant, which is HTTPS, the S there means secure. It has to do with encrypted data. The first one is not secure, that's HTTP. But when we have HTTPS, it means secure. That S means secure, that's hypertext transfer hypertext transfer protocol secure meaning that the data that is being exchanged between the client and the server is being encrypted for safety for privacy and protection now no one can spy on the data that is being exchanged so it's more secure than the first one so that's the protocol now the domain name too the domain name here is www.example.com now the port, it is explicitly specified as 8080. Now most websites, you don't specify the port. Why? Because it is implicitly specified already. It has a default port. For HTTP, the default port is 80. For HTTPS, the default port is 443. So you don't need to specify it. Once you put www.facebook.com, if the protocol use is HTTP, the port is 80. If the protocol use is HTTPS, the port is 443. Implicitly, you don't need to put it there. But in this case, because we are connecting to another port, which is different from the default port, we have to specify it, which is 8080. Now, the path to the resource is also called here path slash slash path slash to slash resource.html. Now the query here, the query component here is the query and the value of that query is value. Now for instance, now if the query here, if the, the query for the query component, it could be anything. It could be school equals to, it will be school which has a value of inuation. It could be that, it could be anything. But in this case, it is query and the value. The query is a parameter and the value is value. Why the fragment? Is section one is after it's always after the pound sign so that's the for the uniform resource locators so let's talk about domain what is a domain a domain is a woman readable internet address address used to identify websites and online resources now a domain is a re woman readable internet address let me explain now when you press www.facebook.com on your web browser it produces the page facebook now the location the actual location is not www.facebook.com is actually an ip address which is numeric but because we women beings cannot really understand numbers it's not easy for us to take note of numbers it's easier it's easy to use woman readable form like names to to locate an address than to use numbers because the actual address of Facebook is an IP address it is numbers but because we can't just use those things it's not going to be easy for we women to use it so we brought out the concept of domain names domain name so each IP address on the internet is match is assigned to a particular word domain name like facebook.com is assigned to a particular IP address so that's how it works so a domain is a woman readable internet address used to identify websites and online resources once we put the domain there the DNS will convert that domain to the numerical IP address to a numerical IP address so a domain is just a woman readable 
internet address used to identify websites and online resources to make it easy for us. That's why we can specify it using the IP address, but it's not going to be easy. You can know 100, 100 IP address. Now, the domain consists of several components. The first component is the top level domain. Let's take, for example, the facebook.com. The top level domain there is .com. It is the highest level in the domain hierarchy. .com. You have .com, .org, .net. All these representing the domain's type or purpose. Number two, we have the second level domain. That's SLD. We call it SLD. It is the customizable part of the domain name. Like for instance, www.facebook.com. The facebook.com is the SLD, which is the customizable part of the domain. It represents an entity, organization, or a website. Like for instance, www.inyoshun.com. Inyoshun, there is the SLD. Now let's talk about the three subdomains. This subdomain is optional. It's an additional prefix to the domain name. E.g. blog.example.com. Blog there is the domain name. Is the sorry is a subdomain blog is a subdomain is an additional prefix now when so many websites does not have an additional prefix like www.inotion.com for that kind of website the subdomain is www the default subdomain of every website on the internet if not specify is www www now for fully qualified domain name fqdn the complete and unique representation of the domain, including SLD, TLD, and any subdomains. That's what fully qualified domain name is. It's just the representation of the domain, including the SLD, TLD, and any subdomains. Now, domains are essential for an internet navigation, providing user-friendly ways to access the website and online resources. It provides user-friendly ways. To access it without domains, you still access the resources using what the IP address, but it's much more easier. That's why we brought about the concept of domain. Now, web technologies. Web technologies. What are the web technologies needed to create this website? So, web technologies are a set of tools, tools, languages, protocols, software that are used to develop operate and interact with websites and web application. Now we can divide it, we can break it down into two, front-end technologies and back-end technologies. Front-end technologies are responsible for the user interface and how the content is presented in the web browser. It has to do with how the content looks like, the visual representation of the content presented in the web browser. Now we have several languages that is used to build the front web, front end. Number one is the HTML, and we are going to be discussing it in the next lecture. Which means what? Hypertext markup language, which has to do with the structure of the content. It has to do with the scalability of the content. There is no website in this world that does not have HTML. There is actually no website. We have CSS. Cascading style sheets, it has to do with controlling visual appearance, it has to do with the beautification of the page, it has to do with the presentation of the page. If you see a beautiful website, it's because of the CSS. Then it has to do, we have another language, JavaScript, a script language. You have JavaScript, it adds interactivity and dynamic features. It adds interactivities and dynamic features to the page. Now, let's talk about the back end technologies. Back end technologies and do the server side operations that support web technologies. Server side scripting languages such as PHP, Python, and Node.js are used to process data, manage database, and generate dynamic content. In this series, who won't touch the back-end technologies, who will focus more on the front-end technologies. Now, how does this web work? 
How does it work? Now, the web operates on the client server model where there are two private entities, the client and the server. The client is typically a web browser, Chrome, Firefox, or Brave, or Brave. There's one browser called Brave, or a web application running on the user device. The server is a computer or network of computers hosting the websites and services. Now, from the diagram below, you can see the client and the server. Now, the client makes requests to the server and see server response, gives a response. And that's what is displayed on the web browser. Now, let's talk about the HTTP request. Let's talk about the request of how does the request work? How does the client make a request to the server? This is how it works. Now, when you enter a web address into your browser, e.g. www.facebook.com, the first step is to resolve the domain name. E.g. example.com to an IP address using the domain name system. Now, after what happens is that when you first type the URL to the browser, which is the domain, it takes the domain name and resolves it. I've said earlier that the domain name is always, always matched to be assigned to a particular IP address. So it's the DNS, DNS, which is the domain name server, that would bring up, that would translate that domain name to its appropriate IP address. Now, after resolving the domain name, that's after obtaining the IP address, the client, which is the browser, initiates an HTTP request to the server. Now, the HTTP request specifies the resource e.g. web page to retrieve and include other additional information such as a request method, get and post, headers and cookies. So that's how the HTTP request work. Now processing, how does it process it? Now when the web server receives the HTTP request and processes it, it locates the request resource on its file system or generates dynamically using server-side technologies, PHP, Python, Node. Then the server constructs a HTTP, HTTP response containing the requested content or data. Now, HTTP response. The server sends the HTTP response back to the client. The response includes status information, e.g. success, error, headers, or content type, the and actual and the actual content, HTML, CSS. Now, the client browser receives the HTTP response and processes it. If the response contains HTML, the browser passes it, passes the HTML document, retrieves additional resources, e.g. CSS files, images, scripts, and renders the web page on the user's screen. So that's how it works. That's how the web works. Now, here are questions that you can go home to answer. Here are questions. First, number one, what are the key characteristics that differentiate web 1.0 from web 2.0 and web web 3.0. In other words, what are those the key characteristics of the different phases of web evolution? Two, how do web browsers, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript work together to create a dynamic and interactive web page? Three, could you explain the significance of domain name and how DNS, domain domain name system, domain name system is just an hierarchical distributed system for translating domain names into IP address. I hope you all know. So this question is just stating, saying if you could explain the significance of the domain name and how DNS domain name system functions to translate domain names into IP addresses. How do you differentiate between the internet and the World Wide Web? Given the URL HTTPS slash www 
www.illustration.edu.ng slash ICT slash lecturers dot html pound sign computer science could you specify the individual components that make up this URL that brings us to the end of this lecture we will continue in the next lecture we will focus on HTML, we will learn HTML fundamentals in the next lecture. Stay blessed.